our resources too. They pay for other priorities, like transportation and infrastructure. Our budget totals $1.6 billion to invest for these improvements. There are so many more needs out there. Remember, future federal highway funds are dropping off. We're warned of this by our congressional delegation. So we're proposing a $240 million general obligation bond on top of the package for transportation and <coughs> infrastructure improvements. The transportation projects in there and the crime lab we're going to let Alaskans vote on these projects because it's their money. We're addressing another big challenge too. That's the availability and the cost of health care. I established our Health Care Strategies Council and I so appreciate the outstanding volunteers who've served there. We're going to pursue many of their recommendations, starting with our Health Care Transparency Act. That's requiring that consumers get better information about the prices and quality of their own care. And we're going to allow competition. Under our present certificate of need process, costs and needs don't drive health care choices. Bureaucracy does. And our system is broken and it's expensive. We propose, as many states have, eliminating the CON to increase choice and to manage rising costs. Currently there are nine active CON uh, lawsuits that are adversely affecting our consumers. Bottom line is Alaskans want health care in the hands of doctors, not lobbyists, not lawyers. <laughs> Smart thing to do too is what we're doing in considering what other fiscally conservative states have done to incentivize employers to provide medical insurance for employees based on the free market. But comprehensive reform must include not only our government reform, but Alaskans choosing to take more personal responsibility. All Alaskans must do better to be better and to be healthier. Our choices often lead to issues like heart disease and diabetes and underage drinking and drugs and violence and abuse. Soaring health and public safety costs, you know, sometimes they're unfairly passed on to others and that's so unfortunate, but even more importantly, by ignoring or accepting selfish choices that cause the abuse, well, children, families, and entire Alaskan communities are destroyed by that. I visited the Child Sexual Assault Clinic at Providence last week. Um, Senators Dyson and French and Representatives Gatto and Fairclaw and others were there. I'll tell you, it was heart-wrenching. Absolutely heart-wrenching to hear, especially of an account where one village sees 85 to 90 percent of the innocent children there having seen the abuse, including some horrible sexual abuse. It's just so tragic, and if that doesn't your, open your eyes to the need, then nothing will. And I know that it's a human's natural defense mechanism to not even want to think about that and not want to take action, but we will, we must, because a few days after Providence, I was in Bethel, so full of hope again, because I saw children so hopeful and so blameless and so trusting, you know, I knew we will not let them down. With a bright economic future on the horizon, these kids need sound minds and healthy bodies to prepare for that future. We'll do our part as a government to help those who cannot help themselves. We're really excited about our youth wellness initiatives. It will combat alcohol and abuse and suicide. We're going to educate kids about healthy eating and physical activities. But again, government can't cure all those ills. And please don't assume that more laws foisted on Alaskans are the only answer. You know, most bad activity is already illegal. We've got to make wise, healthy, personal choices, including choosing not to ignore that abuse. I'm counting on families and communities and faith-based groups to really rise up together very passionately about this. Proverbs tells us there's no strength without unity. So Alaska, 
let's unify. Let's be unified to be strong. Let's serve selflessly and disregard who gets the credit. We're on the same team if we've got the same goal. With so much opportunity here in Alaska, let's look at challenges like we do in our own families. You know, save money and spend wisely, and we're going to secure our tomorrow. Invest in solid foundations like education and deferred maintenance. Let's pull together and not tear down. Let's be positive. Let's respect our treasured past. But now look forward to the future. These are leadership characteristics expected by those who elect us to lead, to serve, to work for Alaskans. What a responsibility we have. It's a responsibility to look beyond partisan and geographic differences, to slow government growth so we don't tax hardworking families and then hand also to future generations a budget that they can't afford, to restore trust in government, to develop our resources responsibly, including that gas line to meet our long-term energy needs, and to equip our students for work to help them commit to personal responsibility and to good character. It's united leadership to do the will of the people with vigor. The Palin-Parnell administration stands ready to work with you, not against you, but to work with you to accomplish all of this. And by doing so, we'll realize the potential that our honored native elders and our constitution's founding mothers and fathers saw providentially years ago. So with 1,055 days to go in our term, we're ready to get to work. I think I can sum it up by uh, just uh, sharing an email that my brother just sent me. He's an elementary school teacher, so I'm going to be listening to him. My brother sent a, a good luck email this afternoon and says, yeah, you've got a lot of work to do. Let's get to work. And he's quoting a Navy admiral, and Mr. Heath says, got lots of work to do. So damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. And I say, amen, brother, we will do that. So God bless you. Thank you, legislature. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to address you early. God bless all Alaskans, and God bless America. Thank you.